Hello to my three subscribers and anybody else who stumbles across this video. In this, I'm going to be showing you how I've changed my rear brake setup on my orange mountain bike. Hope you enjoy the video. Here it is. Hello and welcome to the video. This is um, just me fitting my new rear brakes to the bike. Uh, it's not a tutorial, but uh, I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride. First up then, this is the 180 rear rotor. It's got the six screws that you need to attach to it, so there's no need to use the old ones. I've also got some SRAM brake fluid. It's a dot 5.1, so it's pretty good stuff. Also, because I'm gonna be breaking the hose, I need to use the bleed kit, um, which should make life a lot easier when it comes to getting that sponginess away. Last but not least then, I got my setup, which is again, the Hope E4 setup. It's all purple. You got the brick lever, which is black. The cylinder is purple with a cap that's black. And then I got the purple E4 caliper, which is wicked. It's also got the uh, silver braided hose, so it all matches the front end of my bike, which is the V4 setup. These are just the instructions that come with it, but to be honest, I've done really use them because it's straightforward. This is the internal cable routing tool then, because I'm gonna need to feed, as I said, the uh, braided hose through the rear swing arm. So first things first then, I don't have a stand for the bike, so I'm just going to flip it over old school. Handlebars and seat to get the level, and then I can take the rear wheel out, ready for fitting the disc. Next thing I'm going to do then is take out the rear axle, and then pull that back in so I don't lose it. Then I'm just going to throw under a little bag to stop the uh, sprockets from scraping on the floor when I'm putting pressure on the bolts to remove them from the disc. So in order to remove the screws then you're going to need the T25 Torx and there are six screws in total. I'm using the impact driver just because it's a lot less hassle taking them out but I'm not going to use them to pull them back in because you may over torque them. So the disc now is seated in place and it's time to put these screws in. As you can see, they've got the uh, blue Loctite on them. So once they're fitted in correctly and seated, uh, that stuff should lock them in and stop them from spinning out on their own. Um, I'm going to go across tightening them up one by one in a sort of crisscross pattern. So going opposites and then working around. Yeah, so as I mentioned, then I'm not going to use the impact driver to uh, put these screws back in. I'm going to use a normal screwdriver with the same Torx head. And uh, I'm just going to tighten them up hand tight. Because these things only need 5 newton meters. Um, so I don't have a, a um, torque wrench. So I'll just use the screwdriver, go hand tight. Uh, the Loctite will do its work as well and lock them in. So I'm not too worried. And um, I sort of snug them up once. And then I'll go around and make sure they're all tight. So there you have it and that's pretty much all the talks done up and uh, I've got to say I think that disc is looking pretty good. So um, job done and it's time to take off the rear caliper now. So removing the uh, rear caliper then you just need an allen key so I've got an attachment and I'm going to use my trusty old impact driver. Yeah so there you have it then that's pretty much as easy as it is two allen key bolts so i'm going to take the axle out refit the wheel and uh, then i'm going to flip the bike over and start work on the levers
All right then, so to break the cable now from the SRAM master cylinder, you're gonna need an eight millimeter spanner. Uh, this spanner will fit the HOPE system as well, so just an eight mil spanner will get you through this bit. As you can see there, then I got a nice little microfiber towel to stop any leaks, but I should have worn some rubber gloves as well. And I definitely advise that if you're gonna tackle this uh, on your own. So the next thing to do then is to cut off the little silver collar. This will allow you to pull everything off and pull the cable through the back end of the bike through the internal routing. So yeah, this part you just have to pull with your right hand and push with your left just to get it through because all sorts of debris will have been built up through the channel. Um, yeah, this is what I found easy. And then you just stop just short to enable you to put the tool on. So the tool will then feed through. You can clip the new cable to that and then pull that through. So now I'm just going to break the, uh, the hope cable ready for that to be fed through. Uh, once the black line is pulled out. So that's the line pulled apart from the master cylinder. That's all that's left to be done now is there's a little brass valve that needs to be pulled out and then the routing tool can be fed into the top of the cable and pulled through. So this is where the metal collar can be pulled off. And now the routing attachment can be attached to the black cable ready to be pulled through. And as I mentioned earlier, push with one hand and pull with the other just to get it through a lot smoother. So I'm just going to connect the routing tool to the new cable. Uh, even though it's a pretty good tool, you still want to sort of push and pull to make sure that nothing disconnects while you're feeding the new cable through. Otherwise, you'd have to pull out and try and start again. Or you could end up feeding through and then getting stuck somewhere along the way. So just be careful as you're doing it. A bit of push and pull. And as you can just see, then it pushed out through the other side. So it's all good. We're all clear. So it's just a case of feeding through the rest of the cable now until you get the caliper near the mounting point. And then uh, you just make sure you've got enough slack so that you can mount it without having to pull through as you're tightening any screws. And there you have it then starting to take shape now with the caliper there ready to be mounted properly i'm not going to put any screws in yet i'm just going to feed everything through feed it up to the top and then start connecting the lever so this is a simple process orange use these little clips and uh, they make life so much easier you can just pop them off and pop them back on none of this zip tie nonsense that you have to cut and then replace it looks better it looks cleaner and uh it's, it's more user friendly, definitely. For this next bit, then it's just a case of removing the old lever and uh, master cylinder. But the only thing is the dropper post lever is a part of that setup. So you have to take off the old master cylinder and then put the screw back through to secure the dropper post. And then uh, that will fit up snug against the new lever once that's fitted. So 
So uh, now it's time to add the new brass parts to the end of the cable, which will allow you to make that seal once you tighten it up to the new master cylinder. Now this part is really fiddly, as you can see the little red mark there. This is already drawn blood because the uh, the frayed metal is sort of squeezing through as you're trying to feed the collar on. But uh, thankfully I've finally done it. After all that fiddling with the collar, I need this little tool to make the hole appear again down the centre so I can feed the little brass valve in um, and then once that's in snugly I can screw it up tight to the new master cylinder. And here we go then, squeezing that little bad boy in there and then uh, it's just a case of using the 8 mil spanner and the copper washer actually. The little copper washer squeezes on the end here, uh, that causes a little bit of a crush seal once it's inserted inside, so it's just a case of getting that stupid light out of the way. Sliding that in there, twisting it to get it fitted, and then using the 8mm spanner for the rest. So now that the cable has tightened up to your master cylinder, it's time to just snug up the lever bolts there to stop them from spinning round. You want them to a point that if you were to fall over, your levers will move, so they have got a little bit of play in them, but not to the point that they move freely on their own. Finally, wipe off any excess brake fluid off the cable and off the master cylinder, and then check the lever to see if it's spongy or not. If it's spongy, then you'll need to bleed the brakes. So this is the last bit of fitting then, which is two bolts through the caliper, into the caliper mount. So normally then when I'm fitting a new caliper, I find the best thing to do at this point is to put the two screws in, tighten up to a point where they sort of one twist away from the last bit of tightness and then pull on the levers. By doing that, you make the pads push up against the disc, which brings your caliper in line resulting in no rubbing of the rotor against the pads. So there you have it then, quite a simple process. It took about an hour in total, but they look a lot better. And now I just have to bed them in ready for use.